Good day everyone, my name is Russell La Vega and for today's vlog, I will be looking for my former English teachers. I will be asking them these following questions. First, how do they choose their learning materials for teacher-centered learning approach and student-centered learning approach? Let's do this. Hi, I am Miss Darlene Pagayan. I am a licensed professional teacher. I have been in the teaching field for five years. I was an English communication arts teacher in St. Paul College, Pasig, Father Louis Chavez Foundation for two years. I was a product trainer in Saitel for two years too. Now, I am a business English coach for a Japanese businessman. In my teaching experience, I learned that there are various types of learners and their capacity depend on the materials and strategies a teacher like me can provide. Let me share my perspective about it. The teacher-centered learning approach helps teachers impose authority and dominance in the classroom. In my experience of teaching, I choose the materials for this type of approach that could help me easily explain the lesson. Since I will be the one to do the talking most of the time, it is important to choose materials wisely. The factors that I consider when choosing learning materials are simplicity, conciseness, time efficient, and easiness to manage. Sometimes I create PowerPoint presentations. Other times I use cartolinas and manila papers, which are quite convenient too. However, recently technology has been aiding us teachers to teach more easily. So using projectors and televisions are quite useful to explain the lesson to students. On the other hand, we have what we call student-centered learning approach. This approach has been essential ever since K-12 started. As a teacher, I find this approach effective most especially when engaging students to participate. The factors that I consider when choosing the learning materials for this approach are creativeness, resourcefulness, and easiness to manage too. Also, it can help students to participate and they can be fully engaged with their attention. Sometimes this strategy depends on the student's learning capacity. We all know that some are fast learners, while others need more attention and detailed instructions. Good evening po, ma'am. Hello, Russell. Good evening, ma'am Magdato. My name is Russell La Vega and I am currently studying at Pasig Catholic College. And I am taking Bachelor of Science in Secondary Education major in English. So my question is with regards to our task. How do you uh, choose your learning materials for first uh, teacher-centered approach and second is student-centered approach? Okay. Uh, good evening. Uh, being a teacher, I will not select a teacher-centered. Why? For me, this is an obsolete approach or a traditional approach. More on imparting knowledge to lectures, listening, and absorbing information. The benefits gained by the teacher is more than the learners, which is wrong. The teacher here wants that the class is always in order and full control of the classroom activities. The pupils, uh, the teacher wants that the pupils will work alone and less opportunity to develop their thinking skills. While in the student-centered, the education becomes more shared experience. The pupils has an opportunity to develop and improve their communication skills. Uh, the pupils can collaborate and tend to be more interested when they can um, interact with one another. In this approach, less talk by the teacher, more hands-on activity by the learners. And for me, this is the best approach that I want to recommend. Thank you. Good morning. I am Miss Anna. 
Russia and today I'm going to discuss to you the difference between teacher-centered learning and student-centered learning on my own perspective as a teacher. So when we say teacher-centered learning, it is more on traditional and conventional in approach. So when we say teacher-centered learning, most of the activities here are just discussion, panel discussion, group discussion, it is, a group in, uh, it is a group discussion, but the thing is, the teacher is the one who's giving the, the topic to the students and the possible answers for the topic given. So, in this type of learning, the teacher has a full authority over the classroom activities and also the discipline inside the classroom. There are many disadvantages and advantages in this type of learning. Let's start with the advantages. So the advantages of this type of learning is the classroom is very organized. The students are behave because they are just listening to the teacher and the teacher is the one who's talking, do all the talking and the students are just there working alone in this type of learning. And the disadvantages are the students cannot practice collaboration and communication skills because all the activities given to them are intended for or it is an individual work. That's why they don't have time inside the class to talk to their classmates because they have to finish it alone. So those are some of the activities we usually do in a teacher-centered learning. So in a teacher-centered learning also, uh, the teacher the teacher is the one, since the teacher is the one who's uh, in charge of the whole activity, the students cannot express their feeling, their emotions, or but not emotions, but ideas. What I mean is ideas. They cannot express their ideas towards the lesson because the teacher is the one who's doing all the talking and the students are just there listening. So it is like a passive type of learning. So those are the those are some of the advantages and disadvantages of a teach, teacher centered learning or teacher centered classroom. So activities that we usually use on this uh, type of learning are panel discussion, paper and pen activities which we can do individually, the students can do it individually and a simple discussion like question and answer activity. The teacher will ask question and then the students will just, uh, they will just answer the question given by the teacher. So those are some examples under, or some of the examples of activities that we can do in a teacher-centered learning. In student-centered learning, the teacher acts as facilitator or coach inside the class. So the students have freedom to learn in their own way. They have the authority to express their opinions regarding the lesson or the activity. So in this type of learning, the students can build collaboration and it can develop their communication skills because most of the activities being used in this type of learning are more on group activities and collaborative activities. So they have all the time in the class to talk to their classmates about their opinions or their understanding regarding the topic. So advantages of this type of learning in a student-centered learning are uh, the students uh, tend to be more interested in learning because they can express themselves, they can express their abilities, their skills in every subject, and they are learning the lesson through their own experiences. So as a teacher, when you are making activities under students, student, le, student centered learning, you need to be focused on their needs. So what are their needs? It depends on their skills and talents, also their capabilities. In our school, we are doing this differentiated instruction. So we are uh, differentiating the students according to their levels. So we have high achiever, middle achiever and low achiever so this three type of learn uh, this three type of level we are giving them set of activities according to their level so for example if they are high achievers they will get more activities than the middle achiever 
because in a student-centered learning approach, you are waiting for the students, you are waiting on the students' progress. For the learning materials which we can use in this type of learning approach, for the teacher-centered approach, we have quizzes, assessments, written assessments, we can have seat works or challenge tests, which they can do individually. Because we all know that in a teacher-centered approach, collaborative activities are not encouraged. So activities should be done individually by the students. For the student-centered learning approach, uh, there are many activities which we can do or learning materials that we can use. Uh, for example, we have inquiry-based learning materials. These are materials that can develop their critical thinking skills because these materials can uh, be a problem-solving type of activity. Uh, evidence evidence based reasoning or sometimes it can be a research type of activity so this kind of activity can develop students collab collaboration and critical thinking skills and also when you do it by group it can develop the students communication skills because they are communicating with one another with their own ideas regarding the said activity another is a project-based learning and a problem-based learning this also can develop students critical thinking skills because they can solve problem by group they can brainstorm about a certain topic they can express the, their ideas over a topic so these are examples of learning materials which we can use in student-centered learning Always remember that when you are planning activities inside the class, it should always meet your students' needs in terms of their skills, their abilities, and their learning capacity. So don't forget those things because planning ahead is better or you can have a good result in the teaching learning process if you plan accordingly your activities. So that's all. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Gladie May Casa, an EFL instructor. I was asked to do this video interview on selecting learning materials for teacher-centered approach and student-centered approach. Learning materials have always played a vital role in teaching and learning process. Using learning materials doesn't mean the teacher will teach less. Remember that the teacher is always the best learning aid in the classroom. Learning materials help the teacher in imparting knowledge to the learners and they also help the students retain more information. Deciding whether to use teacher-centered or student-centered approach will determine which appropriate materials are needed. With my years of teaching experience, I'd say that the teacher-centered approach is a traditional way of teaching and is effective especially when discussing a new subject. For this, I normally use the textbook, whiteboard, handouts, pictures, PowerPoint presentations, and other materials which the students can see or read. Using these materials, the teacher can explain the subject easily and students can remember most of what will be discussed. For student-centered approach, I use an interactive LED touch screen, video integrated lessons, and cooperative learning activities and rubrics. In assigning tasks, I have to consider my students' multiple intelligences and set a rubric that will help me evaluate them fairly. It is proven that what students merely hear, they easily forget. What they hear and see, they remember. What they do, they understand and becomes a part of them. I hope this will help you in selecting appropriate learning materials for your students. 
So that will be the compilation of all the strategies, techniques, and methods of choosing the type of learning materials that we teachers could make use of when it comes to teaching or educating our students. I hope that this set of information will help you in your studies. See you in my next vlog.